Stop number six. Cornish Beam Engine. This building, with its great beam and rod reaching down into the ground, houses some remarkable machinery. In 1874, the Preston Grange Coal and Iron Company bought a second-hand steam-powered Cornish beam engine to tackle the problem of flooding. This machine had already worked at four different mines at the other end of Britain. It was dismantled, then shipped north. It would play a crucial role at Preston Grange. Looking up at the end of the great beam, you can clearly read the name of its maker, Harvey and Company, and the date it was cast. Installation was no mean feat. The main engine weighed 30 tonnes. The engine house was built first and then used to hoist the engine into place. If you move around to the rear of the building, you might spot the archway, which was one of the final pieces constructed after the great beam and carriage truss were winched into place. Although not noticeable from the outside, the front wall is nearly seven foot thick in order to withstand the stresses of the working machine. Although there are several other beam engines in Scotland, this machine is the last on its working site. Water was always a problem at Preston Grange. Initially, coal deposits which were exposed at ground level were easily dug out. It was only when these seams were exhausted that colliers looked at mining seams, such as the Great Seam, deep underground. However, at Preston Grange the Great Seam lay 420 feet below and was subject to heavy flooding. Matthias Dunn leased the right to work the coal in 1829. He patented a novel system of iron tubbing to protect and seal the shaft. The tubs kept the water out. Although iron tubbing had some success, a different system was needed for the mine itself. It wasn't until 1874 when the steam-powered Cornish beam engine was introduced that deep mining could begin in earnest. Twenty years later, the engine was improved by the new operators, the Summer Lee and the Moss End Iron and Steel Company. Both the previous companies had gone into liquidation after strikes, persistent and expensive flooding problems, litigation with customers and a slump in the market. Summer Lee was going to be different. It was run by the Nielsen family, some of the most successful industrial entrepreneurs of the Victorian age. Summer Lee added two pumps underground, deeper levels and a third ventilation shaft, before the engine raised 900 gallons per hour. After the improvement, it achieved 650 gallons per minute. The machine ran for 72 years. It was shut down twice for repairs. Inside, you might spot the great metal clamps with which the engineer strengthened the cylinder. The beam itself was strengthened with giant trusses. In all, the engine is enormous. The pump rod alone weighs over 100 tonnes. The engine eventually stopped running in 1954, just eight years before the colliery closed for good. Its job taken by electric pumps. You have now reached the end of this track. Please pause your player until you reach your next stop.